great blizzard of 2022 is passing into the history books, but its legacy lingers on the ground and in the air. Southwest Airlines scrubbed another 2,500 flights today, and the number of deaths nationwide from snow and freezing temperatures topped 60, with more than half of those in western New York State. John Yang begins our coverage. Across Buffalo, mounds of plowed snow are rising. And after days of frigid cold, so are temperatures and the potential for more problems. Officials warned that the thaw could lead to the discovery of more dead as snowbound homes become accessible. So they've sent National Guard troops door to door. And city and county officials have begun to call each other out. Erie County Executive Mark Polencars. Mayor's not going to be happy to hear about it, but storm after storm after storm after storm, the city, unfortunately, is the last one to be opened, and that shouldn't be the case. It's embarrassing, to tell you the truth. Buffalo person. Mayor Byron Brown. And as tough and as strong as the county executive could be in a news briefing, he did not say any of this to me on the phone or face to face. Across the country, stranded air travelers spent another long, frustrating day, especially on Southwest Airlines. I think the worst part was when they canceled our flight, they didn't give us our luggage. So these clothes have been on us for four days. <laughs> the airline again canceled more than 60% of its flights, far more than any other carrier. What's happening to Last passengers? night, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg told Judy Woodruff that, uh, that the airline the can't blame all its problems on the storm. Off. Right now, I would say meltdown is the only word I can use to describe what is happening across Southwest Airlines operations. Today, the head of the Southwest Pilots Union called for major changes. They're using processes and IT from the 1990s when we were an airline less than a quarter of the size. I'm truly sorry. In a video statement, Southwest CEO Bob Jordan acknowledged his company's failings. The tools we use to recover from disruption serve as well 99% of the time, but clearly we need to double down on our already existing plans to upgrade systems for these extreme circumstances. In Buffalo, officials say long days of recovery and mourning lie ahead. The body of 26-year-old Congolese refugee Abdul Sharifu was found in a snowdrift. He'd been dubbed 911 for his willingness to help those in need. Abdul Sharif, who went out to get food and provisions for his pregnant wife, who's about to give birth, and he didn't make it back home. And even as the thaw sets in, thousands of people still need help getting food, medicine, and transportation. Buffalo's death toll from this storm is already the city's highest ever from a weather event, surpassing the blizzard of 1977. Don Paul is a longtime Buffalo meteorologist, a respected voice in the city who's covered the city's weather for nearly four decades. Uh, Don Paul, we think of Buffalo as a city that can handle snow like this, handle snowstorms like this, yet we have this staggering death toll. And I think people all across the country are asking one question, how could this happen in a city like Buffalo? Well, I don't think anyone has the answer right now because the blizzard of 77, which was a ground blizzard that was almost entirely wind blown snow, was not well forecast, uh, wasn't a total surprise, but people were unprepared. This storm had days of uh, advance warning, not just from someone like me, but certainly from the National Weather Service. And we assumed fewer people would try to venture out into it. Uh, and Buffalo is known for being able to handle snow, but there's a certain mythology there, John. Uh, the city has fewer plows per capita than a city that gets less snow, like where I, I grew up in the New York area. And the New York Sanitation Department per capita has far more plows. And then you have so many abandoned cars where these plows here, as in other cities, simply cannot get down the street. But apparently, one of the biggest problems has been so many people wandered out and got into their cars, as well as pedestrians who faced the worst possible result in just the most brutal conditions I've personally experienced in my uh, rather long life. I've never seen anything quite like it. And as bad as it was here at my house, it was worse in Buffalo. We've seen extreme weather events get more extreme uh, in recent years. Do you see any connection with climate change in this storm? 
Probably. It's not quite conclusive, but there's growing evidence that the Arctic, which is warming two to three times faster than the rest of the globe, by warming up has uh, caused the polar jet stream episodically to weaken. Uh, a strong polar vortex keeps most of the polar air bottled up over the polar region. But when that uh, polar jet weakens, it can allow episodic uh, stretching of the polar vortex far to the south, generally east of the Rockies. And this can happen in the midst of an otherwise milder than average winter. And it sounds counterintuitive, especially to uh, non-scientist denialists. Uh, but we can see some of the most extreme winter weather events for short periods. And as you may have heard by now, we're going to most of the eastern two thirds of the country are going to go back to well above average temperatures over the next three or four days into next week. And a lot of the snow will melt, but it's not going to erase the tragedy. Given that, I mean, so this was, has been described as a once in a generation storm. But given what you just said, is it is it could we be seeing these uh, more frequently? We could. Uh, there's some disagreement. There's not total agreement in the scientific community between physicists and climate scientists and meteorologists. Uh, but s some researchers, such as Dr. Judah Cohen in the Boston area, has done some really in-depth research. And uh, he believes these episodes not only will be happening more often, but they already have been happening more often than prior to the accelerated warming. So we're seeing these winter events, but we've also seen some tropical events that appear to be related to the change in the jet stream. And that appears to be, but again, not conclusively tied to Arctic warming. In my estimation, we are seeing these episodes more often, but I'm not a researcher, so I rely on, I stand on their shoulders when I say that. You told uh, our producer, Mike Fritz, earlier today that you were concerned about what this storm would mean for Buffalo moving forward. What, what did you mean by that? I'm afraid that this disaster, besides the hor horrific human toll, is going to take a toll on Buffalo's image and a place for potential industries to come here and locate, when in fact, Buffalo does not suffer risk of mega droughts, wildfires, uh, massive flooding, uh, and the other events that are definitely tied to a warming climate. We have more refuge in our, and of course, our water supply is virtually inexhaustible from Lake Erie and the other Great Lakes. We are a climate impact refuge, but this setback, uh, in addition to the tragedy, I'm afraid is, is going to hurt Buffalo's economic well-being. It's not going to be quickly forgotten. Buffalo meteorologist Don Paul, thank you very much. Our thoughts are with everybody up there in the Buffalo region. Thank you, John.